Adelaide. Best weekend of our lives, man. I didn't even sleep. Adelaide Oval, Gentlemen's Club, HQ, Nord Oval, Mansions, Mr. Chow's, Mount Barker, Dog and Duck, Red Square, Eat, Sleep, Rave, Repeat. Two of those nightclubs have shut down and it's Mr. Kim's, not Mr. Chow's. No, you saw me live in action at that one club we went to. You saw how much I was just partying the house down, didn't you? That club, the hotel. Club X. Went there. Gather around. I can't wait. We're going to gather around every year from now on. Yeah. I love it. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Dan Does Footy Podcast. You can find more of Dan Does Footy on the website, Spotify, YouTube, and social media. Great job. See ya. There was heaps of sick kids and I was like, where are they? Kick them harder. Kick them all harder. Punch them in the face. I'm bloody horizontally trained, if you get what I mean. Oh no. Ooh, I got proud today. <laughs> Should we say this is the line? If you don't hear the next bit, it's over the line. Okay, so if you don't hear the next bit, I've got a line. This is more past punk road. Right? It dips in. Welcome back to Mad Monday, everyone. I've lost my voice. It's just been an absolute whirlwind of a weekend. Thank you for putting us in your ears. Ollie, you and I, we tore through Adelaide like a hot knife through butter. The words that that's getting around in Adelaide. We just, we came, we saw, we conquered a lot on. Um, first of all, you got back last night? Yeah, late last night. So you'd be tired. I'm so tired. Yeah, I've lost my voice. And I had three hot dogs at Norwood, so That's I'm also not gross. feeling. How do you right? have? How do you accidentally have three hot dogs? I didn't you? accidentally. Did you see the prices? What were they? Put it this way: for hot chips, a hot dog, and a bottle of Coke was thirteen dollars. That's probably close to twenty eight dollars at the G. So you can see why I went back for two more hot dogs. Yeah. Wow. Like that's pr- that was insane. I think three is excessive. Yeah. Yeah. No, I dinner? know that. And then you had dinner as well. Well, then I had um, two party pies and a little tiny bottle of red wine on the flight. Yeah. Oh, treat. Yeah. Treat yourself. Uh, We drove for nine hours together. It was an interesting drive, you and I, over there. Um, Mm. You said it best in the vlog that will release tonight. Yeah, tonight. Why do I always fuck that up? Yeah, you're not media trained like I am. That's why. No, I'm just hung over from fucking drinking so many beers on the weekend. that's true. God, I drank so many beers. I was such a biggest legend. We went to a media party, Ollie and I, and... Loved it. I tore that place upside down. The name's there for... Brownie. Juddy. Juddy. Swanee. Um, McClure. McClure. Ooh. Uh, who else was there? Just so many. And we... I mean, in full honesty, Ollie and I did leave at 11 p.m. Because we... <laughs> yeah. Had a big day the next day. Yeah, had a big day. And I just looked around and I was like, I have literally insulted 95% of this room. I saw Brett Brownie was good. Because you know how I've been about... Him running on his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he came up to me and shook my hand. I was getting so much anxiety being around you because I went into Adelaide being worried about because obviously the Prince of Adelaide and you've mm, got a reputation. Your words. But then it turns out when it's gather round, the entire AFL community in the media space are there. Yeah. But, but literally every morning we walked for a coffee, yeah. we ran into someone and I was all, I was a bit like, oh, fuck, here we go. There's only one or two people I think that you've really bigged up. So everyone else you've essentially had a crack at. Pretty much. I mean, you could have you should have seen my amazement when Kelly Underwood was walking towards us. Yeah, that and was, I didn't even know it was her. Yeah, you thought... And you said that was Kelly, that was Kelly. I was like, I have no idea that yeah, was Kelly. Yeah. You literally in Adelaide, if you didn't go to Gather Round or you haven't been to a Gather Round yet, it is everyone in the football world in one town, obviously, but everywhere you go, you just run into people, whether it's players, media, everyone's there. Run clubs. Run club. Run clubs had a very, very <laughs> weird experience with the run club on the Sunday morning. So who um, goes for a run club in Rundle Mall? That's what I want to yeah. know. Yeah, and then that was really weird what happened. We got kind of insulted, so that was fun. Um, but very cool. Very cool to be in the city of churches. And I was at church after Saturday's game just praying for Frio. And we'll talk about it a bit later, but this whole round was just the umpires need to go to church and ask for forgiveness because a lot, a lot of... Weird and bad calls were made this this round, but we did some stuff with Toyota. Thank yep. you, Toyota, for the car, the Land Cruiser. It was very fun. You and I, everyone watched the vlog tonight. It's on YouTube. You'll see what we got up to, but we had a few arguments. 
We came good though. Yeah, well, it was a dynamic. You know, we've we've only really been in a working dynamic for a little bit, but mm. then that really, you know, that's not work. That's just now we have to spend time together. Yeah, and then we quickly realised the dynamic is, I don't know, you're you're in charge. Very clearly, yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. There's no one, no, no one's in charge here. It's just... I well, think other than there's, you. Well, I mean, I make the final call on things, but everyone's got a role to play in, in here. That's true. Um, You know what your role is and you play it. You're yeah, like a good I, small forward in here. I am. You're very um, good. You get to the feet, you pick up the crumbs. Yeah. Um, And then you run to the bench. Yeah. <laughs> but you did say, tell people what you wanted. <laughs> what? <laughs> tell people that, but you're 10%. My 10%? You want 10% more of what? Oh, yeah. Okay. Do I have to? Okay, I. <laughs> okay, so obviously you were inundated with photos and signatures and videos and all the rest of it, and I copped a little bit of small forward crumbs. I got the, I picked up your crumbs for sure. Yeah, and I just think in a perfect scenario, I could deal with that happening ten percent more in my everyday life. Yeah, but that's about it. So you wanted ten percent more increase on photos. Yeah. So when you do grand announcing this week. Are you back? I'm um, back next week. So we play the Giants this week. Next week we've got the Bulldogs Thursday night. I'd be wanting 15 photos. That is awesome. <laughs> I love that you've said that. Put it on the record. And then I'm good. That's after that. great. Yeah. I just run now that we're talking about the weekend. I remember how many how much things we said and how weird it got. But I said on that, I wish you said I want 10 percent more, and I was like, I want people to start calling me Whispers Gorringe. <laughs> If Whispers Gorange can start, that'd be good because the other ones have not been fun. Like the Big Red Shed yeah. did enjoy that nickname. Um, Schnoz, don't like that one. No. Um, Hemorrhoid Boy, that's not a fun one. But if Whispers can get around. So we had that chat and then, oh, yes, Adelaide fans. You okay. went to that town, you call them entitled and now we have a reason why to call Adelaide fans entitled. They don't help themselves. No. My friends in the three primary coloured shirt, mm -hmm. the fruit tingles themselves. At the end of the <laughs> Crows D's game, I clapped and walked out. Big of, mistake. For the D's. How do you, that you are, mate, you're Adelaide's worst enemy. Mistake number one for supporting a different side. Mm -hmm. You know, sue me. Yeah. Someone comes up to my, my bun that was in, my hair. He yanks it <laughs> to the point where... You know, you're not back. Yeah, I could have fallen over. Like, yeah. you don't expect it. Bang. And he goes, is that fucking entitled enough for you? And I went, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to think that you can do that, that's pretty yeah. entitled, I'd you say. You pulled my hair, mate. That's very entitled. <laughs> and you just lost the game of football. Yeah. Adelaide, they, uh, a lot of things were happening in Adelaide. I've never seen a town so invested in wearing Guernseys as grown <laughs> men and women. Like, we were saying, Melbourne, yeah. the scene is... Very much like you dress however you dress and you put a scarf on. Yeah, or like a retro throw, but like the new St Kilda jackets. Yeah, like jackets. Something like that. That's cool stuff like that. Yeah. Adelaide, I felt like it was just like this is the one weekend where we can wear our Guernseys over tops. And if you don't want to do that, let's get more raw, mm. no protection. Let's just wear the Guernseys with arms out. Yeah. Like a lot of that was the scene. And then a few of those fake uh, Bob Marley style wigs, you know, those, the cut, you know, the. Oh. Dreadlock coloured wigs. Oh, yeah. Well, they, did you see them, did you? Yeah. I didn't. No, wow. Yeah, you were so sitting a bit I was probably, yeah, further in yeah, a better section than I was. But the, the, gather, the gathering was cool. It's a cool concept. And you know what? I'm going to say it now. Adelaide, you have it. Until you show me otherwise of why you can't have it, it's yours. I don't want any chat of give it to Melbourne or Perth. or uh, 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 uh. This is Adelaide's baby. You certainly can't give it to Melbourne because pretty much every weekend's gather around in Melbourne. Well, if they gave it to Melbourne, I wouldn't leave electric. What, would you not even go to the footy? No. I fucking love that joint. I'd ask for electric to put footy screens in there because I just know. Yeah. Here's another one that we did. Wheelchair footy. We didn't do it, but we went and saw it outside the Adelaide Oval. Yeah. That was – I haven't seen that before. That was pretty impressive. I haven't. That was by Twitter as well. That yep. put it on. That was very cool. Very cool. Um, where we saw that. What else was there that was fun? Oh, the fucking zip line. Mm. So they have this – ladies and gentlemen, I probably can't have kids anymore because if one incident happened, zip line. The zip line was no shit, 60 meters in the air. And I'm scared of heights. But Toyota were like, hey, we'd love for you to like just film yourself on the zip line. I was like, you know what, Toyota? No worries. So I go up there. I have 10 minutes to think about it because the line's being queued up. And they're like, mm -hmm. go, go, go. And I get up there and I have some small talk. And the guy's like, look, it's it's not that bad. It's, it's, it's decently quick, maybe 30, 40 kilometers an hour, but you'll be fine. And when he opens the gate for you to fly through, he has to physically open the gate open mm -hmm. so you can actually go otherwise it's just a cliff sure. face sure 
So he goes, three, two, one. He opens the gate. His gate slips out of his hand as I'm coming through and I split my nuts in between the gate. And I tell you, I've never felt so sick in my life just dangling in the air from one side of Adelaide to the other, like generally wanting to vomit. It does. So it goes from one side of the River Torrens sort of over the bridge or... Just before the bridge. Yeah, before But you know when you get like sack tapped or you get hit in the balls and that like that that bottom of the stomach like deep ache yeah i had that for the whole zip line over there it was just the worst one of the worst one of the, the things that could have gone wrong the only thing that could have gone wrong on the zip line was yeah. that guy fucking the gate up and he did it yeah and he did it it wasn't great it wasn't great but as i'm saying gather around keep it adelaide one thing that they need some fucking work though is that bridge <laughs> fuck me adelaide oval build a second bridge or make it wider because that thing fucking sucks we, so if you haven't been to a game at Adelaide Oval, there's literally, well, two bridges, but one main one main bridge out from the Oval to the casino. Yeah. And no shit, it was 40,000 people trying to get across a bridge that is built for 10 people wide. Yeah. We came to a standstill at one point on the bridge. Yeah, it's cool on the way over if you're an hour early. It's you know, cool so for a march. It, yeah, that's great if mm. you're a march, march, you know, jack jumper style. But on the way out, you do. You just stare. And I did feel for you because... You're so tall that oh, it looked like everyone's following you. Yeah. And to everyone's credit, they were very nice. Like, no one pulled my hair. There were no. a lot of ass taps going on, and I was like, okay, we're clearly not in a pub, so that's sort of sexual assault, but I'll let yeah. it slide. Uh, but everyone was very nice. Very, very nice. Um, but we'll go back again. We loved it. Oh, we'll absolutely be going loved back it. again. I wish I, we, you obviously didn't get to come with me to the Richmond Saints game at Norwood. I, no, I, I missed that one. I just loved it. There was also, how good this didn't know, Norwood Food and Wine Festival on outside. On the parade. So you see you in heaven. So I, so I went, didn't get anything, and then went and had three hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and they would love that. That's All the, the nice wine festival, and food yeah. out there. Everyone is asking, hey, why didn't you stay in town for Adelaide? Like it's a long way to go and not watch the, the Frio Carlton game. I had to come back for my best mate's 30th. So that explains that. But a quick recap of the gather round. Essendon. Uh, oh, sorry. This quick recap. This is your quick recap, everyone. What you sent through in uh, Instagram. Just general snapshot. Essendon came through heavy. A lot of stuff about Essendon here. Essendon played like a VFL club after the first quarter. Essendon are fucking shit. I don't know why I barrack for them. Essendon edged my ass. I can't watch Essendon. It's bad for mental health. I mean, they were pretty poor and we'll dissect them soon. Gather round is the best round, hands down. I can't argue. Freo were robbed. The Sun was the best defender the entire round. The Sun was very, very present in every game. That's true. It was a lot. Yeah. I have to think about that. Had, I mean, put it this way. You bought two pairs of sunglasses the entire time we were there. I did. Yeah. Think I about needed that. Sunny. I needed sunnies. That's how sunny it was. Uh, can't, can't win without an umpire. I don't know about that. Giants win the flag. Also, my hemorrhoids are flaring up again. Please explain. I mean, that's your body. I couldn't really explain why you have hemorrhoids. But you did you send me a hemorrhoid thing today? Yeah, no. So what it was, it was essentially a video of, of a nurse um, oh, describing yeah. what a, a hemorrhoid is, how you can stop them, how you can look after them. I've got it. Should we just play it for people if they yeah. want to know? So if you do have a hemorrhoid, here's some little facts. The bottom of hemorrhoids. Can young people get them? Yes, they can get them. They are more common in the ages of 50 plus. However, in saying that, they're caused due to pressure in and around the anus area. So often pregnant women or people who strain a lot uh, can get them quite easily. No. How can we avoid the hemorrhoid? So <laughs> lifestyle things can... Sorry. How can we Sorry. avoid la hemorrhoid? <laughs> Don't make it sound ghoul. Event or reduce the symptoms of hemorrhoids, things like drinking a lot of water, having a healthy diet is super important, um, and having a lot of fibre in your diet helps as well. What if you've already got a hemorrhoid? You don't have to live your life in pain. There is medication you can come and see in the pharmacy. Have a chat to your Priceline pharmacist. It's not awkward to ask. This. Yeah, it is, mate. Trust me. I get hemorrhoids all the time, and I say, hey, I need some cream for this grape that's out my ass. It's very awkward. And all they give you is, I can't remember the cream name. Oh, I think it's called like something roid. Le Cremus de Anus. Le, le Hemroid. It's called something. It's very awkward. Yeah, it would be. I haven't had a hemorrhoid in a long time, touch wood. Well, because you've been having water, fibre. Fibre. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Le Hemroid. Moving on, fraud list. Here's this is from you still, guys. Fraud list. Collingwood, Essendon and the Saints are on fraud list. We're going to come over for your reaction on the Saints game. <laughs> Just in general here, let's get into the round now, but... We have to, and I feel like we're harping on about it, but we have to fix this goal line review stuff. 
And I feel for Laura Kane because she would be – she's now just rolled out by the AFL to just cop it mm-hmm. as like a person. Like you're to blame for all this stuff where it isn't her problem but she has signed up for the job. We have to do something here. Whether it's the goal line, it's uh, the – I mean the stuff with Freya on the weekend. Something has to come to the game where we – we take control here because it's just it's delaying the game it's taking the sting out of the game and i fucking hate it at the moment i hate it i think as we said last week maybe it is trialing the vfl a captain's call or a coach's call like they do in the nfl throw a flag up or something where if you think something's a bit you know not right you want to challenge it you have a 10 second window to be like actually we'll try that i'm not sure what is that we do but not only if we do bring something in let's get some umpires who are confident Someone who's actually want to put their, puts their balls on the line and says, you know what, I back myself in. I think that was that was a call. Every umpiring review at the moment, it feels like is going to the fucking arc. And if I see crypto.com on my fucking screen one more time because we're going to the arc, I'll fucking lose it. Mm. It's doing my head in. Doing my head in. I hate it so much. We need more David Rodens because that's a guy who stands there and he goes, you know what? I've played this game. I've got massive nuts. That wasn't touched. I see the post. I'm good at what I'm good at my job. I'm David Roden. I can dance. I was a great player. I was quick. I was lightning. I'm, I'm hot. actually hot. Yeah. I'm hot. I'm ripped. And I just know that I'm not sending that call up to the arc because yeah. I backed myself in. How good was it when Guinea kicked his goal and then Roden's going, just smiling? Smiling. Going. Get David Roden into prime time. Yeah. Get him in a prime time game. I don't care if it's a, a Melbourne game. Now, I'm sure he has another job and needs to work. But if there's a big Melbourne game Thursday, Friday night, Get Rhodes in. Get Rhodes in. I need more Roden. Along with the umpiring, I feel like holding the ball has gone out the window. Okay. And I feel like on the goal line for a shepherd, if your ball's going through for a goal, that's out the window as well. You could stab someone on the goal line and it'd be play on steel. There was – did you see that moment in the Saints game? That's why I said it. Mm. Horrible. It was just a reminder that not only fans nor players know the rules. Like, it's just, we don't it know what to do. It was great. I don't, and I don't want to be negative on the game of AFL at the moment because it's such a good product and it brings so many good people together like we saw at Gather Round. And yep. it's such a, a cultural thing that we all love and we look forward to it every week and we love talking about it and bringing it down. But there is something so wrong at the moment with this game. And it's the umpiring. We've given the umpires, one, either the power of God by saying you control too much now or not. We've, we've made it too hard on the umpires too. We've made it too hard on the umpires to actually adjudicate the game. So now it's having a flow-on effect where the, the spectators and probably the players as well are like, what the fuck is going on? The Frio Carlton game was as poorly umpires I've seen in a long time. And I don't want to be that guy that goes after the umpires because it's low-hanging fruit. It was just a really poorly umpired mm, game. For both sides. For both sides. Yeah. For both sides. Uh, uh, it, at one point, I think Cottrell... He pushed Luke Ryan out the way. He marked it and ran on and the whistle got blown. And both players looked at each other mm. and were like, I don't know if that's you or me. Umpire said play on the cultural. And he literally was like, well, fuck, I'll keep strolling here and keep the goal. Yeah. Like when that starts happening in the game, that's when you know that we've lost a little bit of control what's happening here. Just need to figure out actually what to change because you'd have to admit – got a pretty unique sport on our hands right it's so unique like and it's I get, tough it's tough and it's tough and again i don't want to as i said i don't want to be the guy that's all negative about it because i understand how tough it would be but there's some stuff there where we have to with the goal line stuff either get better technology or the umpires need to actually make a decision one way or the other of themselves and stop going back to the review mm. like they're leaning on they're leaning on that way too heavily you know what's different as well? If I compare it to soccer, now that they've really brought in VAR and anything that's either a goal or a penalty decision gets looked at really heavily. And at the start, people were complaining about how long it took. But because in a game like that, one goal is the difference, mm. it's justified yeah. to take that moment. But in our game where, you know, you could pile on four or five goals in you know a couple of minutes if you really wanted to... Mm. You could just make a decision to move on with it. I think so. If like, you've do we just go raw? Yeah. Like, or maybe we say, maybe the, the whole overview is, no matter what happens, we're going to extend the time from when the ball goes through the goals to the centre bounce for 10 seconds mm. and everything gets reviewed. And if anything comes up, we'll call it back. Yeah. 
Or, you know, review it after the game and then everyone wakes up. Or and we the scores uh, change. The scores change. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'm good with that. So, I, yeah, so I think we've won, but we have to wait till the morning. Yeah, to don't see. celebrate Oh, yet. I lost my 10 goals. What the fuck? <laughs> That'd be awesome. No, so I, maybe we put cameras in the balls. That's where I'm at. Stick, stick just 40 GoPros to a Sharon and just say, go, go for it, fellas. Let's the, see. The footage. The, the footage, footage would be oh, so, so funny. I think the big one is, and we trialled it in a preseason game, is the goalpost stuff. Yeah. There's no other sport in the world where you get punished for hitting a post. NFL, field goal, hits it, goes in. Yep. I think rugby might be the same. Yep. Soccer, hits a post, goes in, it's a goal, it's a rewarded. I mean, footy, I feel like it's, it's, it's going to go that way. Because it's actually hard for... Well, one, it's slowing the game down and the umpires can't get it right, which then mm -hmm. we're going back to the cameras and the big delay in game. So I think you just say, listen, it's been like this for so long, but we now think that the way that the, the game is and the speed of it and the sting and how we want to keep the excitement in the game, we just say, if he hits a post, it's in. You know what? This is why we need to do this show because we're the next generation. And here in Australia, we're so like, don't want to change. Nah, like, fucking real change fingers it. in the ears type job. Like, no, 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 everything's change fine. It. Why not? Give it change a go. It. Might not work. We might we might see it and go, oh, mm. actually, this is shit. Yeah. And put a camera in the point post looking at the goal post because yeah. Tyson Stengel took a mark. Everyone was arguing about it. That would have been avoided if there was a camera that we could actually see what was going on. Yeah. That's my frustration, Gom. Um, we I, – I love this. We was at the – I was at – what game was it? I only went to one game, the Adelaide um, – Melbourne game. And you know how we stand up a quarter of time? Mm. Everyone stands up a quarter of time just because yep. you stand up. Uh, a woman that we were with was like, oh, why do like all the men stand up a quarter of time? Like, that's really weird because they don't really go get a beer or the tour. They just, everyone just stands up as one. And I was like, oh, it's because we got to stretch from yelling at ball all quarter. Yeah. So I was like, what do you mean? It's like, yeah, we yell at ball 60 times a quarter. So we got to stretch it out and get ready for the next quarter. Isn't it? Footy really is a religious experience because we've got all, all of these little things that we just do mm. like yeah. that. We just go, well, we'll just stand up now. It's so good. <laughs> A lot of feedback that the Mexican wave made an appearance and people hated it, really hated the Mexican wave. I haven't seen a Mexican wave in ages, but I'd know that if I was in a crowd and the Mexican wave started coming, I'd be like absolute chances that's and happening. Not at the footy. Not at the footy. That should be banned. It should be banned. What else happened? Uh, news of the round coming out of the gather round. Jeremy Finlayson has used a homophobic slur against an Essendon player during the weekend, came out and apologised, but you think after Clarko... Yep. Um, that is just a 20K fine straight away. Well, he went in at three-quarter time. And reported it. And reported it, which I yeah. find – I find, I mean, that's obviously a good thing, right, that you're, you're pulling mm. yourself up. But I, I just will be interested to see the fallout as to what that changes, you know, like – Yeah. A little, little bit like – I mean, this is completely different, but, you know, in terms of if you go to the tribunal – but you show that in whatever circumstance it's a bump, it's a tackle that you showed intent or you were looking at the football, then that – generally, you know, yeah. shaves off a, a week or two. Yeah, I, I think so. Well, I'd look, be yeah. interested. Yeah, he came out, as you said, he came out three-quarter time, told an official, had to play the last quarter knowing that, so that would have been obviously, I mean, his fault for doing it, but then heavy on him knowing that there's mm. a big fallout coming here. Came out and apologised yesterday, so it would be interesting to see what the AFL does with that. But from the precedent that's been set, you think the AFL would say that's 20K fine, no suspension, mm -hmm. be better. Yeah. Cozy Pickett got another week. Man, he cannot – he loves a suspension. Loves a suspension. Just a and, little one. But just the same action every time. I'd almost be saying as Goody, I'd say, mate, we're going to make your boots heavier to stop you fucking jumping mm -hmm. because it's the same suspension every time. Bailey Smith, he did it. He did it again on the weekend. He did it to Bailey Smith. Did the same thing this weekend. Yeah. And just stuff that's not necessary. Mm. And he'd be the most frustrating player to have on your team because, like, you are so good – yeah. And then you just rub yourself out for these little things. He might be pretty close to a lifetime ban. <laughs> I think it's 19 weeks all up and then you're banned from the game of football. Darcy Fogarty also copped a week for his hit on Fife. Now, this reminded me of like a medieval jousting action. Real fist out, just hoping. I yeah. mean, yeah, yes, hoping for ball. But if Peter Wright got four weeks for a footy action, you can't tell me that Darcy with a fist out running towards a player is a football action. Dan, can I... Look, this is something that almost got me kicked out of the car on the way to Adelaide. This is the sort of shit that annoys you, but mm. it's um, Lockie Fogarty, not Darcy Fogarty. Oh, my God. Just thought. That's actually cool. Because remember... Nah, oh, you missed Darcy Fogarty do it as well. 
Did he do it as well? Yeah, <laughs> but it was behind the play. You missed it. I'm the only one that saw it on my on Thursday night. Lockie Fogarty, sorry. Yeah. Lockie Fogarty. I do hate when that happens as well. Lockie Fogarty and his current player. Uh, it got a week for that. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, – I mean, he was clearly going for the ball, it looked like. Like a disposable, but it did look like a, a yeah. jousting moment. I mean, I did find it – like when players get hit, they go down, obviously try and milk it a little bit to yeah. try and whatever. But when he hit – Fife's left shoulder and then Fife grabbed his right shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, it obviously didn't hurt that much in a yeah. mate. But here we get a week. Um, and people are just in general, news out of the round, pissed off that Carlton are winning. I mean, people are, a lot of people are saying that the AFL just wants to give Carlton the flag this year. So they're pushing for it. Which, I mean, they wouldn't be mad about. No. It'd be great for revenue for that absolute stacks they'd get in. Um, so maybe they are. But they, I think Carlton have become the new Collingwood this year. People don't want to see him win. If you're not no. a Carlton fan, it's like, fuck, this sucks. And they were almost playing a bit like Collingwood of last year. Up and about. Well, they're just like get, getting the job Close done. wins. Like, yeah, close wins, maybe a bit from behind from time to time and just doing what they need to. Close wins. Former, <laughs> yeah, the former umpire, Michael Pell, he just gave Jordan Clark a glowing review here. Um, we now know that Jordan Clark said, you fucking idiot. But he was saying that to himself is what he's come out and said. Mm. And the umpire has obviously mistaken that for you fucking idiot to the umpire, but that wasn't the case from what Jordan says, allegedly. But umpire Michael Pell, former umpire, the guy who was accused of leaking Brownlow votes or somehow trying to tell people what the votes were after an officiated game. I'm not sure if it was the one he's umpired, but he had inside information. Still being investigated. He came out on Twitter and tweeted... The irony in all this is that I warned Jordan Clark in a COVID-14 v14 nothing game when he was a sport brat and carrying on that he needed to stop abusing umpires. Guess he still hasn't learned. Stinky attitude and wonder, wonder why Geelong were happy to see the back of him. Ah, oh, Michael Pell. Just a massive drive-by from a guy that got sacked for leaking brown low votes. I love that. I love people who just fucking come out of nowhere and just massive drive-by on Twitter or X, wherever it's called. I'm all for it. Just the equivalent. It's the online equivalent of pulling someone's hair. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Just unbelievable scenes with Michael Pill. And probably not great for his case to get reinstated as an AFL umpire. No. No, you can't be. I like the, the term stinky attitude, though. I like that. I warned Jordan Clark in a COVID-14 v14. Those COVID <laughs> games were literally like bottom of the barrel stuff where no player wanted to go. 14 versus 14. It was well. horrible. So the reports coming out of those games were like, this is just a non-event, this game. So much space. The players yeah. didn't care. Crazy. Big up to Michael Pell. <laughs> <laughs> Big up to umpires. <clears throat> and it is the first time in AFL history that we have four zero and four teams. Wow. Hawks, Kangas, Wet Toast and Adelaide. For the first time, which is pretty remarkable. Literally four, yeah. Crazy. That it's they haven't been able to register a win. It's amazing when you when anything like that happens and you go, the, the game's been around for so long. Like, you would have thought this, this would have happened by now, but there you go. It's crazy. Norwood Footy Club, We a lot of feedback has come from the Norwood Oval itself, um, which we will get into in a minute. But Norwood Footy Club want to become the 20th AFL club, which is just, I mean, there's also the Northern Territory that would like a team. Um, Western Australia, Canberra could push for a team. But the Red Legs reckon that, they're, they're the clubhouse leader. I mean, they have big sponsors in Wolf Blast, Coopers, and they have the highest attendance in the sample. Mm. So maybe, I mean, if they did that, that oval has to be redeveloped because that is an absolute, that's a genuine Oz kick oval, that one. I couldn't believe it. I knew it was going to be skinny, mm. but the wings are a straight line. It's skinny. It's not an oval. I don't even know what shape that would be. It's skinny like with a- no hips. It's like me. It's, it's literally like yeah. my body type. Hey, where's your hips? We could play it on your back. You could play it on my up, just on my torso down to my shins. Yeah. It's the same. Where are your hips at? No hips. Don't know. No booty on it. But it's a jet. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of commentary from it's the, the boundary line is straight line soccer field kind of action. Just how's the uh, the timing on this article as well? Remember, we looked at it when we literally pulled up in Adelaide, and I don't know if anyone's had the chance. I'm sure they have because obviously we're up the top of the charts mm-hmm. <coughs> to listen to last week's episode. We were talking about Norwood. We said we said that would that be the leader, I think, to be... For a pre-existing club. Yeah. 
Adelaide would make sense. I mean, they love their footy. Gather round just when is that? That's not enough of a case to be like this could work. Yeah, that oval just needs to be redone though. Push it out. Maybe we don't get the the spectators on the ground. Like mm. we just push it back ten meters, so there's some space there. Well, that's the problem, right? You've got it's like one of the old school sort of championship Premier League sites that you know the stadium is hugged by houses. So mm. unless we've got a bit of a castle situation on our hands. Yeah. You know, what do you do with that? Because it'll be very difficult to redevelop. You just it would have be to hard. find somewhere else. It'd be hard. Yeah. So who knows? I, I think there has to be 20 teams eventually. Yeah. I think 19 is going to be a shit show and they'd be looking to put a 20th team sooner than later. Well, if they want to go up to the Northern Territory, maybe they could be the Norwood Territory. Get out. <laughs> the Northern Territory. The Nor- uh, yeah. Nor- Norwood Territory. Yeah, we can workshop the name of it. Let's get into the round preview, mate, because as we keep saying, it was a massive round and gather round. Next year, I think, let's just give us a showdown to kick this thing off. Just makes sense now. <laughs> Peter Malinowskis, uh, Andrew Dillon, let's just come to an agreement that the showdown kicks it off. That would be unreal. It just makes no sense to me, though. Yeah. It doesn't. To not have one? I mean, I guess the way it stands right now, you get two opportunities to watch a South Australian team other than the one. Mm-hmm. But it's the or, or make it the last game. How good would that be? True. Yeah, show down the last, like, and then we just make that bridge bigger. That'll be my two like RFIs for Adelaide: the yeah. bridge and give us a showdown. Yeah. Adelaide, Melbourne kick off the round. Melbourne won by fifteen points, and they should have given. Yeah, I said. I said the Crows are either the showdown or just give the Crows a layup. Like we know they're struggling. Give them West Coast. Just make it easy on them. Yeah. Just. We, uh, you need to showcase Adelaide and the two teams winning help. So let's just give them West Coast. Flattering, their... Yeah, flattering scoreline in the end, I thought. Well, I think it flattered the crop. Yeah, Because Melbourne just controlled this game. And at the start of the year, it was all – we heard – I think we came in one of the first episodes. I said, I know, I was like, I don't believe the hype that's getting around the Crows. Mm. I can't see it. I look at this list and I go, where are you playing finals and where's the improvement coming from? We didn't think that Tex could do – the 70 goals again, which he unfortunately isn't text, but that's not his fault. He's 33 or something like mm-hmm. that. They are just – they're not anywhere at the moment. Mm. They played better, yeah, but even, you know, walking into the into the round, this round in Adelaide, it was – a lot of talk was Adelaide are going to bounce back here. They just have to find something. Mm. They just have to – and it just didn't happen. I mean, they had started off well, but then it, they had no control in it mm. at all. And the fan next to me – 90 seconds into the game, 90 seconds goes, well, this game's over. And every other Adelaide fan I met, whether it be in the toilet or walking around the ground, was like, I asked, oh, hey, you guys going to win this game? But it was pretty close. You guys going to win? And they're like, mate, no fucking chance. So now the fans don't even believe that they can yeah. win. But they were better. They just can't kick a winning score and they cannot hit a target to save their lives, which breaks down all their link-up play. Mm-hmm. I, met, I saw uh, an assistant coach over there. For Adelaide. And I said, look, what's happening? Because like last year was good and this year is really bad. And he's like, well, if you can't hit targets, it makes it really hard to get anything on the ball, to get any play, any run, any drive. So they just need to hit targets. They now go to Melbourne to play Carlton at Marvel. Realistically, they go zero and five and this season is a complete write-off. Their Mm. draft history has been... Someone in the comments messaged in and said the draft needs to be looked at and how they've drafted the last few years. They haven't drafted well. No. You know, they've recruited, they got Dawson in and um, Rankin came in, but the draft itself hasn't been a good one for them over the last two or three years. As we said, the scoreboard flattered them and Melbourne didn't dominate where you'd think they'd dominate. No. We thought that the midfield would be where they win the game, but the Crows actually smacked them in there. I mean, track was still track. Oliver was down and Gorn is back to all Australian form, but they didn't control that bit at all. In fact, they lost it. Mm. It's just that their defense was so structured behind the ball. And watching it live, I was like, this is amazing what they're doing behind the ball and how they set up. Stephen May is a dog, man. Just a dog. I don't know who I was talking to. In the first five minutes, he did a contest and he grabbed his ribs like they're broken again. Mm -hmm. For the whole first quarter, he was grabbing ribs, moving his guard. He looked so sore. But just to dog it out for four quarters on a good forward in Tex and play so well, intercept mark, back with a flight, he's different. Mm. He is so different. I, I, It was crazy what he did there. They completed the robbery, two wins in Adelaide. 
That's all they need to do. Tick, tick. And you just have to appreciate what they're doing as a team. After all the noise, and we come in here every week and I say, they don't give a fuck about the media. They do not care. They're up against the wall and they, they're just like, whatever. Keep coming. Keep swinging at us. Yeah, there must be something incredibly unifying about that feeling. If it's you can all buy into it, Us against on. the world. Yeah. And if they win the flag, obviously I'd love Carlton to win the flag. But if they win it, I'd be like, unreal. Yeah. After everything for you guys to do that is just crazy. We need an investigation into Bailey Fritch's hair. What's in that thing? Because it doesn't move. It. I watched the warm-up and I was like, this guy's hair is just slicked back to the back of the ears. <laughs> He's slick. It's got to be Grippo in there. It's something. It's something in there. It's unbelievable how much it doesn't move. And it was windy on ground. <laughs> exactly. just And slicked it back to the back of his neck. But yeah. Melbourne, it looks like uh, Lego. It looks like a Lego man. Yeah, big Lego head. Yeah. Yeah, Lego hair. He's got Lego hair. It doesn't move. Yeah. Melbourne's defense is where they'll win a final or go close to winning a flag this year. They, they are so good behind the ball and they all play one and a half. So I'll explain what one and a half is for those that don't. Normally, a typical defense is like, you play one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to have someone drop off and try and, and intercept mm -hmm. or we'll play a plus one behind the ball where we're down one forward because we've dragged one around mm -hmm. to obviously stop the bleeding or gain some control. That's what normally defenses do. Melbourne play one and a half. So they play on my man, but also I'm guarding grass. The further the ball out is, the further away they are from their man and more guarding grass. The closer the ball is, they're guarding a man with the ability to go and drop off. So if the ball's 50 out, they're probably playing man on man. But if the ball's 70 out, they're playing one and a half. So my man's here, I'm 10 in front of him, and I'm guarding the dangerous area the ball's going to get kicked to. It's unbelievable what they're doing behind the ball. And would, I mean, that's, I have never even heard of that term. Is that considered pretty difficult to do? Well, you just can just get exposed so quickly. Yeah. and the, But they back it in. They do it so well. They, yeah. You really have to back in your midfielders to put pressure on to play one and a half yeah. for a whole game. So that they, when Adelaide looked up, as you saw, they looked up and it was Lever in grass. It was May in grass. Yeah. It was Judd McVie in grass because they play one and a half so well that when you look up, you're like, well, fuck, my defend, my forward is now so far behind that Melbourne defender because Lever's playing this role. May's playing this role up. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I think they just keep rolling. I don't know who they have this week, but Adelaide needs some answers quickly. I don't know where the answers are. I think they play rank and deeper. I'd like to see him deeper, push Tex yeah. up higher, Tex wheeling and going to a dangerous ranking. Who knows? And the D's have uh, Brisbane Thursday night at the G. At the G. Yeah. Man, you, yeah, yeah, you think they keep rolling what they're doing, but we'll do that in the uh, next step. Kangaroos v Lions the next game, and this game was just over 20 minutes into it. The Kangaroos, wow, wow, wow. I mean, it's – I feel like we come in here and say the same thing every week about West Coast and the Kangaroos. It was, it's not like they're not trying. And I did think this game would be a lot closer because it was being played on a soccer field. But they're just not a good football team at the moment. I mean, we did call for Combin to come back and he was their best player. He was very good. I think someone's listening to our show. Someone at North is listening. But they're just, they're just not a good footy team at the moment. Their mids don't get beaten, but... The forwards don't keep it in the forward line. Mm -hmm. And then the defenders just – there's so many inside 50s that they're just getting drowned back there. Mm. So oh, hopefully it changes. But Danaher was just way too big for any defender. Hipwood, after copying it all week, found some form. And they just got a, a big dose of confidence that they needed, Brizzy, mm. just to get the season going here. Their next three are tough. They play Melbourne, as we said, Geelong and the Giants. And that's – I mean, if you lose two of those three, that's your season done. Yeah. It's and it's a reasonably tough stretch, really. Real tough. Yeah. Real tough. But we'll see what they're made of at least. We'll yeah. know, okay, are you guys back or is this going to be a long year for you? Port v Essendon. Port won this by 69 points. Sorry, but I did those games the wrong way around. It doesn't matter. Port v Essendon, 69 points. And the Bombers, you're back on fraud watch again because this was the perfect opportunity in Adelaide to say, you know what, AFL, we're different this year. We're not going to be the brunt of the jokes. We're going to actually come to these games and be competitive and put up a fight. And to go out there and just pull your pants down on your ankles and take a shit, so disappointing. And yeah. they went 40 minutes without scoring a goal. Mm. 40 minutes. People drove eight hours to see you guys lay some turds on the ground. So and I'm, I'm trying to find positives in this game for them. And I, I looked at the game again and I went through the stats and the players – and the only positive that I could pull from this is, thank God it's round five now. Mm. 
like you can actually find some answers here to work out what's happening. Their center bounce stuff, they got smacked in by Port and Port went and took their 16 center bounce clearances for goals. So that's mm-hmm. so hard to to win a game when that's happening in the middle. The Essendon edge, fuck knows what this thing is because one edge is really good, but then you flip it over and you go, well, this is pretty shit. And there's no in between mm-hmm. between the two edges. It's either good or it's bad. And there's... A supporter, that'd be, like Saints fans, so frustrating. Yeah. So frustrating to watch. But you can't come out and say you want to play with an edge and then get smacked in the mouth and say, well, done now. That, that actually hurt. Mm. Show something. Someone hit someone. Show something. Someone show a bit of fight there. Zach Merritt does it. Someone else show us something. Yeah. That's what I would have liked as an Essendon fan if I was watching the game at home. I'm like, come on. Give us something. I think their speed got it exposed big time. They, I look, I look at their team. And I'm like, where is your speed coming from? Well, Redmond, Nick, Nick Hind when he plays. Nick Hind, um, I mean, he was going too fast there for a little bit and missed the goals completely. Yeah. <laughs> so he's going too fast for anything. Need Nick Hind to pull it back. <laughs> but I look at their team and I say, okay, uh, McGrath, yeah, and Redmond, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. We could probably yeah, end your the show speed, here. Your speed, speed, <laughs> yeah. and that was exposed so much because Rose, Jason Horn, Francis, and Butters just lit you up, lit you up. Mm-hmm. There are some good names in that list. Oof. Ports, man, Ports list is stacked, oh. and every year we say they're going to do this because they go to tip the you know halfway of the season and they do the same thing. They win ten in a row, whatever it is, yeah. and then they, you know, absolutely turn into a train wreck. But this feels different. They went out and recruited. And built this team. But like their back line is so solid right now. You've got Houston just launching bombs from back there into a forward line that is just so talented. I think one thing you know for sure is even if their season capitulates, which it has been doing, is you, you're at the stage now where we can feel pretty confident with Port that they're going to have a, a really good side for a long time. Like you've got young guys that want to be there, decent culture mm. and unbelievable players. Great culture so and just a good know. song at the start. That would get me so hard. I'd have to go to the rooms and be like, boys, I need 10 minutes to get this thing down. I can't run around with this throbbing. What would you, what song would you pick for Carlton if there was a sort Mm, of. At the moment, they've got. uh, 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 You can't really like anthem that. You know, you can't get your scarves out and, you know. Oh, I think every every club's going to do it. They used to play, Carlton used to play Hell's Bells, I think. That was pretty intimidating. That's awesome. I know the Saints play Robbie Williams' Angels uh, after a win. That If we did that never tear us apart style, yeah. that would be very good. It was cool. I, I, loved, I loved it. It was very like – and we, it's been around for a while, but it's pretty intimidating, I could imagine. Had you not been – you've been before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But just like it's just very intimidating. It's yeah. a big air. Yeah. Big up to them. Big up to Port. <laughs> big um, up NXS. In excess, two bucks has to go. Sorry, now let's talk about Portmore. Connor Rose, mm-hmm. he's a serious guy. I love him. He's a what he did to Essendon should be he should be criminally charged for that. Yeah, just abused him. You just took Essendon, pulled his dax down, his skid marks with him, just wiped the ass with him. Thirty six and three goals. Are you kidding me? Crap! I didn't think he was. I know he's a good player, but to, as a captain, to be like boys. Jump on the back here. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to be the first one to get this ball rolling. I loved it. I loved it. I don't know. Questions for Essendon. The two rucks. We know how I feel about Goldie. We know. And I'm putting that aside. How do you feel? I'm putting aside the fact he made me eat a footy, a Sharon. Just looking at the two rucks has to go. Because mm-hmm. neither of them can play forward. Neither of them are pure forwards. They're not even hybrid roles. They're both genuine ruckmen. Mm. I don't like that. Nick Cox is just the greatest question mark of all time. I don't think he's a backman. I think he's like a Mark Blitzars on the wing. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they do with him. He was a, a low draft pick as well, or high draft pick, sorry. So then you get him moving into a role. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know for Eston. I don't, I don't know where they go from here, but they need to find something. Yeah, and quickly. Sydney West Coast. Big congrats to West Coast. Actually, big congrats. Didn't get rolled over by ten goals, and the AFL should probably give him four points for that. I'd like to see them rewarded for that effort. I just didn't see it coming. No. We sat here and I said, everyone, jump on Sportsbet feed and follow me into this one. I said 80 and a half points, 80 and a half. And they did not get rolled over and abused like I thought Mm. they would. 
good effort to Mount Barker as well. That's not a fun trip for anyone. No. Well, I mean, I loved it, but for a player. True. No. I mean, yeah. And I was in the hotel with West Coast. So that was very, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say I was avoiding them on purpose, but when Tim Kelly rolled out of the elevator, I did hide behind the concierge desk just to, to make sure he didn't see me. Well, I, I remember when you told me that we loved the idea of you just standing still in the middle of the foyer. No, oh. not just just look them straight them in straight in the so eyes. So bad. Don't don't disconnect eye contact at any point. So bad. Yeah, they knew that. Didn't they? They knew what I was doing. <sighs> Here we go. I've tossed and turned whether to say this. Say. So. Now she's either doing it on purpose, and if she is, I rate it so much, and I would love for her to be have an interview and be like, you know what, I'm doing it on purpose because I know that the rise it gets out of people, and I would I'd love it. But if Kelly Underwood doesn't get the year right, I might I might lose it. It's 2024. Out of one thing, if you didn't know anything about the two teams and maybe you were a bit, you know, you didn't do your research enough or you just whatever, it's 2024. Let's get that right. Harley Reid, he was very good. Very good. I, I think he's got some venom in him and nasty and he was just pushing the Swans boys around. There is some stat like he's broken the most tackles this year, which I don't really care. I think we're finding like stats for Harley Reid to be top of. Yeah, everyone's, okay. The media is very – everyone's saying glazing, which is unfair to Harley because he hasn't really lit it up. No. It's not his fault. He's in a team that's really struggling. But he was good from what I saw. How good was the uh, celebration after his goal? Double Cobra. and oh, the and then – Pull it, Yeah. I mean, that's going to look really weird in two years when he doesn't <laughs> stay there. <laughs> he starts grabbing another Guernsey. I did think that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he is dating um, Dersma's sister. Xavier Dersma's yeah. sister. Interesting. Yeah. So, so maybe he's going back to either a Melbourne team. Yeah. Mm. There's a connection there. Read into that what you will. Harley read into it. Sydney, I reckon, <clears throat> that would have been insulted. Sydney. Yeah. It felt like the AFL had sent them to their bedroom. At Mount Barker and said, think about what you did last week against Richmond. And they just came out and said, we're going to give the bare minimum effort here mm-hmm. for three quarters and then we'll just turn it on. But West Coast hung around. To their credit, they just hung around and made life tough. And that's all we've asked for West Coast. We All we've asked is to not be super ass, mm. just compete and fire a shot. And they did that this weekend. And the defense isn't that bad down there with McGovern and Barras. It's just that they're defending an extra 30 inside 50s. So they're doing a lot more work. So it's not going to look great for them. Sydney started their season hot, but I think we can put some brakes on them at the moment. The Richmond loss, mm-hmm. this thing in Mount Barker, they just got over the line. I think we can just call off on them and say maybe we got a bit toey at the start for Sydney. And the last thing I took out of this game was Adam Simpson. They won't sack him this year, but there has to be a point where the discussion is, okay, this isn't working anymore. We're, we're sick of getting tired by, you know, d- 10 goals. Mm. That convo I think is coming up. Well, I don't think he, he <clears throat> clearly might not be the best person to lead a, a rebuild. And that's okay. Some people work better, you know, mm. with yeah. a great list. And some, you know, coaches are better at, yeah. you know, reforming a team and a young side and looking after them. So the talk of West Coast getting a combo pick, can f- you can f- delist that straight away. Mm. No way. You want a flag in 2018. Yeah. Carlton have been shit since 95 and we we ate shit for years. Big bowls of it. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, just scooping it in. You've done two, three years of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Keep eating, mm-hmm. I say. Struggle like we all did. I don't remember Carlton being that bad though. Oh, we were pretty bad, mate. Do you reckon this bad? If, if the current West Coast team and then Carlton from 95 on was that if you were to pick a team that was pretty bad, who'd win? Um, I feel like maybe the expectations were different because Carlton had stacked their team with number one picks. Mm-hmm. So maybe that was worse because they had talent in there. Yep. It'd be tough. They're both, they were both very bad. Mm-hmm. This team's, uh, I mean, things look better now because Carlton's going well. West Coast won a flag five years ago. Yeah. Like they have pieces there. It's not our fault that they sold the farm for a Tim Kelly for two round picks. Mm-hmm. It's not our fault that, you know, they haven't, again, another team that probably hasn't drafted as well as they should have. Mm-hmm. So the draft you have to get right. You have to nail the draft these days. If you don't get something inside the top 20, I don't think there's anything after 
pick 20 in a draft anymore. No, you, I mean, you might find... You get lucky. Like one, I, I, but, yeah. I generally think recruiters say in drafts, after pick 20, take a pick. Mm. Dartboard at all of them. Like, you don't know. I, I, you, yeah, but We're just seeing now more and more with these four teams that are zero and four, that your draft is just so essential to any success. <laughs> Carlton Frio. Dogs keep barking, train keeps rolling, I say. <laughs> Cop that, flag metal. Stick it right up ya. This was uh, this was actually rare to see Freo not in the graveyard. So it was actually good to see what they could do. Normally they're just so far down in the graveyard that I'm either asleep or just don't want to watch it. But they led the game for 105 minutes and then we all know what happened. We all know what happened. We'll get there. But Freo's tactic of boring the opposition to death, that worked in the first half. <laughs> Like, I feel like Carlton players are like, this is so boring that I don't want to be here. What made it so boring? Just just this chip, kick around, yeah. control, nothing exciting, no, like, highlight plays, just boring football. With their sick Guernseys on as well. And they looked, we'll they were so, around. yeah. And the thing is, they looked prepped like they were going to go out and just blaze, like, this whole field a lot yeah. and do some cool stuff and just came out and just played boring football. <laughs> but both teams, and to their credit, putting the other team to sleep works. It's working for them. Their midfield is elite. They smacked Carlton around in the midfield. I was watching it. I was going, this is just, we are getting smashed in there and we're a good midfield and they took us to town. Mm -hmm. They play a brand of football that no matter who they play, where it is, what time of the day, graveyard, no graveyard, they'll be in every game. Just hard-nosed midfield. Their forwards compete in everything. Their backs defend really well. It's just a good brand of football. And for the Blues, they couldn't get anything all day. Nothing. This looked nothing like a Blues game. And I'll be honest, didn't deserve to win it. Mm. Did not deserve to win that game. Not only the age, the age thing, but just the way the game looked. Weren't in it at all. Nothing went right. Stop, start kind of footy. They played horribly. The last quarter, somehow still in it. Frio take it forward a couple of times. They missed a couple of shots. Could have, could have really buried the game, but kept... Carlton in it. And Carlton just decided, you know what? Two minutes to go here, two and a half minutes to go. Let's just roll the dice. Roll the dice, see what happens. Let's take these kicks more inwards. Let's get some run on the ball, get it forward. And the game turned out the way it turned out. Mm. The ace touch. Right. I'm so excited to ask you about this. What do you want to ask me about it? Just the whole thing. Where yeah. do we start? Definitely touched. Yeah. Definitely touched. It yeah. was, but... I think Kane said, like, we don't call those. The umpire doesn't call those ones. Yeah. What I would have loved from Aish is you sell that thing like you've been hit by a fucking train. But he didn't even know it hit him. He pointed to Fife saying, Fife's touched that. He didn't even know who had touched it. Everyone was yelling out Fife. If you see the vision, everyone's going, Fife touched it, Fife. Aish is like, oh, oh yeah, Fife touched it. So he did, it must have was that much of a glancing shot on his shoulder. They didn't even yeah. know it was off him. But I need them to sell that. I need them to sell it big time, but they've been absolutely hit by something. But then the moth steps up. Matty Cottrell, the moth, attracted to the bright lights, stepped up and just said, you know what, boys? I've got this. Such a dog. Such a, a dog move to Frio, but yeah. then just to have that dog inside you, I loved it. I loved it. And the Blues get their first win at Adelaide Oval. It was glorious. Oh, I'm so sorry. Like, that's great. They're like, I'm re like, really happy for you. You're welcome. But, like, just when you look at this the next time you have to go to Adelaide and play either side, and you go, yeah. Cup and Football Club have only won the one game at Adelaide Oval, yeah. not against an Adelaide side. No. <laughs> it's just no. a little bit of an asterisk. And I just want to say, still did it. yeah, I just want to say, well done to the umpires. You know, it's a hard game to umpire. I get that. I'm on your side, if anything. I'm out here defending you guys. The game's tough to umpire, but you did that so well. You did that so well and it was so fair and I'd like to see more of that next round. Big up the umpires. Big up the umpires, big up to Aish. I believe now, just on that, I believe in, no. a, in a flag. This could happen. Yeah, well, the fact that on the road to Adelaide, I think that came up five times before Beaufort. Well, I told you where I was playing the after party. <laughs> Johnny's Green Room Johnny's in Green. Carlton. Have you booked it? Well, I'm going to now. Yeah, I, I truly believe they can win a flag this year. And if they do, look out, look out. Dogs, cats, uh, the cats. I don't know if the cats are actually like a good team or are they a contender? Like what are they? Because they've only beaten North. Yeah, they beat North, St. Kilda. Saints. 
No, sorry, they beat Saints, Adelaide, Hawthorne, the Dogs. Yeah. So I don't know where they're at, but to their credit, five day turnaround, and they take down a doggies team who should have just run them off their feet. Absolutely, just ran them around. They're younger, they're hotter. We know the cats are just uh, you know older and slow, and the average age is like forty two on the list. I, I looked at the score and was like, wow. Yeah. Well, this is probably where we need to give them more credit because each week. It might sound like a little bit of a cop out, but that's always the thing that we fall back on is at some point they're too old. They're mm. gonna get tired. It's a five day turnaround. They're gonna be tired. Keep proving us wrong. It doesn't seem to affect. Keep you. proving us wrong. And I'm sorry, I'm I've got an egg in my face. Undefeated now. It was just a good gutsy win. And I, I the dogs I think need to turn this thing over. Mm. Turn the list over. Get some fresh soil and get some new dogs in the soil. I think that there's a chance to turn over Bailey Smith to the Cats for some picks. I think there's an opportunity to turn over Lob for a pick or two. Um, I think that is it McRae that you get something for? Is it the Caleb Daniels you get something for? What what picks can we get in and get those top twenty picks? Yeah, maybe and tra- you know, if they're not top twenty picks initially when you trade the players out, do a bundle and trade into the top twenty and try to turn this thing in because you got some pieces. I like Darcy up forward with Jamal Hagen. I'd love to see Aaron Norton down back again. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you let Jeremy Cameron come up the ground all game and do what he wants, had 30 mm-hmm. all game and not do anything about it, I think an Aaron Norton on him would have been good. But for the Cats, Chris Scott just trained them really well. They just know what they're doing. They're all connected. They're just so well trained and structured that they just keep winning. He's a bloody good coach. Such a good he coach. He really is. When you're that good, I think now the argument is we've always said that the Cats were good because they just had good players and Chris Scott was kind of in cruise control with his team. But he's just a good coach now. Mm. To be to May finals 11 of the last 13 seasons, you're just a good coach. They get the best out of players. And I think everyone always talks about their life footy schedule and how it's just so do what you want. I reckon it's a massive part in it. Really? I reckon that if you give the players freedom to do what they want and not put all these restraints on them, so what freedom are we aware of that they have? So we know that, well, from what I've heard, is that they can do their own gym time programs. The mm-hmm. older players get a lot more leniency in that. We know that the players get to do their own recovery in their own time. Um, the meetings are very player friendly. So, for instance, most clubs probably have their, let's say, uh, for instance, uh, they'd have a Saturday game. Monday morning would be come into the club and see your physio first. Every player get checked for physio at like a nine. Mm-hmm. Then we'll do a light run into a team review. Mm-hmm. So you're done by all that by 11. I think Geelong is very much like, hey, when do you want to do the review? Do you want to do it in the morning? Do you want to do it in the Arvo? What do you, what's the best structure for you guys? So giving the players more control of what their week looks like. Mm. I think it's just, yeah. Well, you're adults. You know, like, I think yeah, yeah, you are, you are. I mean, they're old adults, yeah, they're but they're very much adults. pensioners. Yeah. You know, once they go and get their pensioner check, they then go into the club. It's like okay, well, you've now got forty dollars to spend this yeah. week. What well, do you want to buy with that? So they'll keep rolling. Do they, they're yeah. I think the big test would be when you come up against a genuine, genuine team for the Cats. What happens then? Yeah, well, exactly right. So who have they got? Well, see, they've got North Melbourne this weekend. Oh, so that's just going to be that's a rollover. Disgusting, and it's in Geelong. Yeah. So that'll be tough. Yeah. Then they go up. Well, well okay. They go up to the Gabba the week after that. To That's what we'll ones. know. So, That's what we'll know where they're at. Yeah. Yeah. Saints Richmond, you were there. Oof. Give us your thoughts as a Saints fan. Tell us that you are. Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah, I'm seeing role. You didn't get to have this round because the AFL didn't allow MCs of footy clubs to come to Adelaide because they thought it would be like an advantage? That's We heard that right, didn't we? Yeah, well, look, this sounds like the most bizarre MC thing in the world, but we ran into the Port Adelaide MC in yes. Randall Mall and he just gave us the inside scoop on, you know, all the MC goss. Um, yeah, so like no no home announcers and just, just random people doing random games and I rock up at Norwood Oval yesterday and I'd see... Mitch Robinson. You're going to be filthy. Doing my job. Scoffing your second hot dog as well. No wonder you went back for a third one. You've been flat as. <laughs> just just depressing eating. <laughs> yeah, look, wow. How'd he go? Look, he, he was fine. Look, no, he was good. Mm. I thought he was really good with the activations in the games. I still think I provided a little bit more when it came to the roll call. You know, there Did you was, give him more? Yeah, but you would have. You have a connection to yeah, him. Yeah, there was no. He's smooth as Wilk, Callum Wilkie, the King of the Hill, Brad Hill. You know, there was no. Are you doing that, are you? No, that's what I do. Yeah, Mister Steal your footy. 
That's great. Jack Steele. Jack Steele. What, why, is there anything in the lineup that you're not sure about yet? Are you going to roll out? Uh, nickname wise, yeah. Well, well, I did say Man of Steel, but I like the idea of saying he's Mister Steel Yo Footy. Do you call Jack Higgins Missy Higgins? Missy, I could should do that. I've hardly been outside my room in Jack Higgins. That's good. You should do that. Yeah. What else could there be? What other player? Um, um, there's pretty something to do with Dougal. Like what Dougal. do you say for Max King? Uh, I think I said King of the Hill. That's yeah, that makes sense. Dan Butler, Silver Service. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Ron Marshall. Um, I think I just said something about his nice smile. Alien boy. Mm, yeah, well, that I was <laughs> speaking of. Mm. We saw mm. 22 of them. Oh, that was so weird. So <laughs> for context, Ross Lyon in his pregame presser, I think a journo asked, hey, something happened at halftime. What happened prior to that or something like that? Yeah, he was asked essentially, right, Well, because it was. Look, let's be honest, it was a – Really average first half. Didn't we kick one goal in the dying moments of the second? Mate, it was quarter. a hemorrhoid of the first half. It wasn't. Guys. It wasn't great viewing, and it stunk. He was asked about the slow start, and he goes, "Oh, well, what? he's so quick as well." He just goes, "Well, what actually happened, mate? Was uh, uh, we parked a UFO out the back of Norwood, uh, and then uh, we put twenty two aliens in Saints jumpers and let them play instead." That's so bizarre. <laughs> I, like, I kind of like that he's taking the piss out of them, but also it gave me massive Rodney PTSD. <laughs> like, really? yeah, it, Rodney would do that all the time, but not really in the media, but like to the coaches. And it gave me PTSD of when he asked me when I took my head off for a pumpkin and after a game. Yeah. If anyone hasn't heard this story, I think I've told it a couple of times, but we played a game and we got absolutely smoked and I... I was to my credit, I was okay. I think I had like four touches, okay. and that was a lot. I got I was near it a lot though, like the, the almost Present. touches. Oh, time on screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have been on the screen a lot, but I just didn't get the ball. And we come into the change rooms, and he was really calm, which was like I was like, oh god, thank god, that's awesome. He comes in, he goes, he walks around, he paces back and forth in front of the whiteboard. He goes, "Where's Gary?" And I go, "Here we go, here we fucking go." <laughs> how was uh, how was your morning this morning? I was like, oh, that's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, pretty good. I um, had breakfast, got a side bowl, went for a walk along the beach. It was pretty good. So, okay, what did you do after that? It's like, oh, I had some lunch, then had a shower, got changed and got in the car and started driving here. And, and pre-game? What did you do pre-game? It's like, oh, I did normal stuff. I ate like a whole bag of lollies. I had two mothers. Um, then my stomach got a bit sore and I had to shit it all out. Uh, then I came back out and started warming up and got into it. So like, okay, that's all good. That's all good. At what point did you decide to take your head off and put on a fucking pumpkin? And then slam the board. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I don't think I did that. That was in the pregame. I don't know if you're listening. I didn't really do that pregame. <laughs> I was busy walking and eating. And- it, the Ross stuff, that gives me, I think he'd be very much like that behind closed doors. Well, that in fairness though, that was an attack on you. It was think, very personal. I think the alien comment was more of a, an attack on the journo. Yeah. Being like, well, what do you reckon? We just had a really average start. We weren't ourselves. True. He loves a good spray to the um, journos as well. Oh, he loves qu- it. His first stuff's good. You're quite brilliant. Yeah, What's your that's name? good. You're quite brilliant. What's your name? Yeah, yeah. You're quite brilliant, Shane. He's, yeah, he's a very good operator with the uh, where the cameras are on. Yeah, no, he's good. But look, yeah, that first half was, Horrible. was one of the worst watches of footy. And then on the flip side, from both Richmond and St Kilda, the third quarter was probably one of the more watchable quarters we've seen so far this yeah. season. Yeah. Like it, it kind of had it all. It was, big it was up to awesome. both teams for turning up in the third quarter. Yeah, big I up. I mean, Nor- Richmond turned up. Big up the UFO, big up the aliens. Big up the Norwood Oval, big up the no hips, big up the pockets. And I want to hear from, if someone can message into Dan Does Footy, the owner of the house that just picked up a Jack Higgins ball. Yeah, he launched that thing. I hate that. Do you really? Mate, it's Nord Oval. You know there's no stand there to kick it into. Don't launch it 20 houses back. Yeah, but it's just landed in someone's pool. Like, how good would that be? <laughs> Imagine if you're outside just sitting there and just a ball, I gather around footy, just lands in your backyard. <laughs> I I said that I think the same thing as you. I was watching the first half and I put them on fraud watch. Yeah. I was like, this is just a gross half of footy. They only kicked a goal when Jack Higgins kicked one before the halftime siren. And yeah. I was like, this is – it was the most St Kilda thing ever to just produce that. Yeah. And no wonder their fans are the most frustrated in the league. I would – you would have to admit that if this game was anywhere else, I think we would have just be, – we would have been totally fine. I felt like that against Geelong. I felt like if we played Geelong at Marvel, we would mm. have won. But that oval isn't an oval. It's a piccolo. It's a, not an oval. 
No, it's not. No, like, it's a freckle. It's so difficult. It's to, to, yeah, like, it's a soccer field. It's an AFL's field. It's an actually an Oz kick field. It was ridiculous. But the kicking wasn't great either. It wasn't good. But so, thank God, thank God you had Jack Steele who just fled out the traps and said, boys, get on my back here. Like, yeah. this is just, this is not good. Get on, boys. I'll take you for a ride. I want Max King to just tear a game apart. Yeah. I'm begging for it. Just come on. You are so good. You're so talented. You're just so big. Just get a game and just tear it to shreds for me. Mm-hmm. We, we called, we asked Logan McDonald to do that this year. He's been doing that. Max King could literally be, it's so cliche, anything. Mm-hmm. Anything. And he's getting good service. It's not like the ball's not going in there. I just want him to do it. Yeah. Just to see what he can do. Dusty, after he was told to retire, came out and had 30. And Richmond, we said last week, they don't roll over. They're just a team that are brave all the time. They do not let anyone just walk over them. And credit to Adam Uze for putting that in them still because I think yeah. Dust I think Hardwick started it so then for Adam to say boys we're going to be that's still in our DNA unreal yeah. loved it how good was Bolton so good <laughs> so but they also just find another way to go because if Bolton is quiet you guys are fucked that's true there's nothing else there really well there isn't we know there isn't yeah like he, kicked, he had to kick four to keep them in this game and St Kilda didn't turn up for a half so that's where again credit to Richmond so competitive you know you're brave as but there is a potential here while your names are out just to be taking a bloodbath for a few mm. weeks here. Mm. But again, brave as. Suns, Giants, Expansion, Cup. Good game, this one, out at Mount Barker. Harbick, he bought the axe out. He cut Ellis. He cut Sexton. Cut Casbolt, Buderick, and he bought in some young dogs, and they were very good. Will Graham and Sam, I think it's pronounced uh, close, Closey. Closey, okay. Yeah, I'm going to run with Closey until I'm told otherwise. They were very good. Mac Andrew could just be a unicorn. I've never seen, and maybe I'm wrong, I've never seen a halfback or fullback move like he does. He's 6'8". Agile, could probably put some muscle on, obviously. Yeah. But the way he moves, floats across packs, one-handed plucks, unreal. Can I just say, so just this is purely selfish behaviour here, but... So he's six foot eight. How tall are you? Six I know seven. So he's that's that's tall. It's tall. That's really tall. Tall. He just moves. I know probably a lot of people haven't seen a, a Suns game because they're either in a graveyard or just at a terrible time. Or, or living on the Gold Coast. Or on the Gold Coast. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, a lot of Suns fans haven't seen a game because yeah. they're on the Gold Coast and there's, yeah. you know, strip joints and stuff to go to. But he moves so well. And he's gonna have these games where he goes up and down, but he defended really well yesterday. He just I think he's a keeper. He could be the next like big, big thing down back. And the Giants, they just couldn't be fucked for three quarters. And then they thought, you know what, let's put the foot down and end up winning by five goals yeah. in a game they didn't really try. That's just, they That's didn't care. They just rocked up the Mount Barker said it's four points and we'll do what we need to do. I really hope the Suns can put this together because there has – looking on the outside in, this has potential to be what it has been for the five years prior to that, where you're, uh, you're Mac Andrews, you're Lacocious, you're King, you're Ainsworth, and you're Humphreys. While they're going through this period of transition of if they're going to be a, a bottom six team to finals team, do they want to hang around for another five years? That's the next question. I don't think the Suns will play finals this year, but do those players say, you know what, we've gone through five years of pain. Do I have another five years of this in me? Do I end up, I've seen Dave Swallow, He's been here for 40 years. He's old as shit. He's gone through some bad times. Do I want to be a David Solo where everyone at the end of your career goes, great club, man. What else did you do? Yeah. You know? This is, I mean, we hate this about the AFL media, but I'm going to do it for a second. Could you ever see Took Miller leaving? No, he never will. He never will? He's, mate, his blood's in that jumper. Yeah. He's not leaving. He, he, He will not. I don't think after the comments he said around his BNF win and how much he loves the club, it'd be... Prim, it'd be similar like a Tom Lynch move where everyone said, well, Tom Lynch is a snake because he just went to the mm. flag favourites. Yeah. You know, I don't think he would do that given what he said. I do think that is a real possibility. Again, shitty AFL fossil media we're going to do here that the the Suns groom these young players and then Melbourne clubs come and pick them off mm. and pay overs for them just to get them out of there. But who knows? We'll wait and see. Maybe maybe Dimmer can turn this thing around. Toby Green kicked five. Jesse Hogan leading the Coleman. Who would have thought? Kicked four again against a good backman as well. And a contract extension. Yeah. Yeah, now he's laughing. Now he's loaded with money. 
And Freo probably wish they had Jesse Hogan because if Freo had Jesse Hogan right now, oh, look out, look out. Last game of the round was Collingwood v Hawthorne and generally the best to last. This was unreal. Pies fans who are celebrating this, shut up. Shut, shut up. I don't think there's a lot that was celebrating it, but there was a very much like a sigh of relief, like, whoa, we just escaped jail here. You just beat a Hawthorne side who were 38 points down. Hawthorne stink, but like Richmond, just brave. Mm-hmm. Just so brave to be like, we are down here, but we don't care. We're going to come back. The move to put Hardwick up forward mm-hmm. by Sam Mitchell, big tick. Big tick. In the last five minutes of the game, I was sitting there going, this is going to be a Hawks win. They are coming like a, a freight train. And Collingwood said, let's park the bus here. They didn't realize that the bus got absolutely smashed by a freight train. Like, oh, sorry. It was huge. It was yeah. unbelievable what was happening at Adelaide Oval. Collingwood are not the team they were last year at all. We've said it for a long time here, but now that we've seen what we saw yesterday, this thing isn't anywhere near a back-to-back premiership thing. I think this is going to be a lot of work still. I think it's one of those years where the come down is going to be mm-hmm. big. They are the second worst defense in the league. Statistically. Well, points allowed. Yeah. Team defense, the second worst. They leak more than – I had something else I was going to say there about leaking, but I'm not going to say that. They leak a lot. Mm-hmm. The only team that leaks more is North. So they give you a look in every game. Yeah. I just – I don't know. That they, they just seem they're, like they're a shell themselves. They're two and three, but just the feel and the vibe around it doesn't feel like a back-to-back thing. How good is this? Speaking of it being almost accidentally the best game of the round, I was watching the last five minutes at the airport mm. sitting next to the AFL fixturing team. Oh, wow. And they were sitting there going, oh, no. please, oh, no, this is not. Would have been not for the script. This not is for the not script. on the bingo card. Do you tell them put a showdown in next year? Yeah, I had a few. Yeah, you do. A that would have loved that. Yeah. Did you have a curry at that level? No, I didn't have a curry, but it was great Kane to had see. A curry. That Kane had a curry, but mm. it was good to see that the footy fine guy. Yeah, he had um, curries. He posted and said, "I just want to thank you guys." I'm telling you, they got mm. great curries. Great curries. They look good. So, and yeah, again, Hawthorne, they're going to be really just. Hawthorne fans are going through right now, but you'd take that as a Hawthorne fan. I mean, on one hand, you wouldn't because you don't ever want to be 38 points down and have to do that much work, but a great effort to yeah. come back. Great effort. How good was Guinea? Oh, Yeah, Guinea with his wink before the Little snap. Wink. Cheeky. What a cheeky bastard. I loved it. It was so good. There wasn't enough... Maybe you said it last week. There's so much love there still for him from the Collingwood fans. There was no real biff. It was very playful. Yeah. Which were you, you called... Well, yeah, it just felt like yeah, he's been pretty honest, and I think that if you are a part of the Collingwood setup at any point and you speak highly enough of their fan base, who are brutal at times, but they can also be very mm. loving if you're a part of you know yeah. that world. You know, he he loved the club, didn't want to leave. Yeah, and it's you can't blame him for that. Bring him back. Oh yeah, yeah. I think getting yeah, he obviously flat, but he sit there going, okay, well, I'm now going to roll at Hawthorne. Collingwood are going. Okay, mm-hmm. like maybe this has all worked out for the best. Yep. Um, Marby or Chol, just quietly, could either be an amazing forward or could be dropped. You know, like he, his effort is so high than so low. Some of his chasing efforts are hor- – I think it's been hollow before. Some of his chasing efforts, he's like, nah, don't care. But then he does something amazing like, okay, you could be like, a you know, a Wayne Carey, Jason Dunstall. Yeah. Just like, – he's an amazing award player to watch on camera. A lot of camera time for him as well. Two more things to do here. The lose by, run by update. I was pretty nervous halfway through the last quarter there. So for those who are listening for the first time, I made a commitment last week that I will run the amount of points that Carlton lose throughout the year. <laughs> That's a total of zero kilometers right now. Mate, you're putting lost. weight on right now. I am. I want to go for one. I'm actually yeah. dying to go for a run. So if the AFL could script that one, that'd be good. That's brought to you by Gatorade. The Gatorade... Lids off team of the year nominees this week were Connor Rosie had 36 touches and three goals, as we said. Brayshaw had 38. Toby Green had 17 touches, five goals, and Danaher had 20 touches and five goals. And it was an absolute landslide to Connor Rosie for joining the team. So welcome, Connor. You're on the team. We still got the Blazers designs. I haven't done a design yet. That's all right. We've got plenty of time. We do have plenty of time. Also, just on updating people of what's going on, guess who hit a $16 winner? And sports bet speed. Did you really? <laughs> Guys, stop living under rocks. Take the rocks out of your ears, if anything. I'm picking winners here. 
And there was a lot of happy punters who made comments and said, thank you so much. You know, you're just amazing at this. How do you do it? And I was like, guys, get on the traps. I'll That's take you to Pond's land. I know, I know. So another big round coming up. We'll um, put some more bets up this week, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll join them. you this week. I think I've seen enough now. I trust you. Mate, I've gone back to back fifteen dollar winners. Yeah, there you go. Like, <laughs> I can't do much more for everyone. That's it this week. We, as I said, we had a great, great time and gather round. We will be back later in the week for our tips leading into another round of footy. We love you and thank you again. Thank you for putting us in your ears. I just need some time away from you now. What? I just, it's just been a long get week. out. It's just been a long week. Yeah, you'd Ooh. feel the same. Ooh. Ooh. I, yeah, I'm done with you. I need yeah. to get out. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.